Milt Putnam, a native of Seneca, South Carolina, worked as a photographer for the U.S. Navy. Putnam provided photographs of several Apollo recoveries, such as Apollo 8, Apollo 10, and most notably, Apollo 11. After an exhausting day covering Apollo 11's recovery operations, an astonished Milt Putnam woke up the next morning to realize that his photographs would be used by news media the world over. Well, when I first joined the Navy, they sent me to cook school but I, and butcher school, and so I was a butcher for four years in the Navy. I left the Navy because they would not let me change my job to photography. Two years later, I was uh, walking past the recruiter's office in Anderson, South Carolina, and I went in and told him if he would send me to photography school, I would come back in the Navy. So he said, you'll have to drop one rank to get back in and we'll send you to school. So I joined the Navy again to become a photographer. It was very, very important for the American history. It was very important for the American public because we beat the Russians to the moon. And that's really why they put such a push on it to get to the moon with Apollo 8, circle the moon with Apollo 10, then Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, Apollo 11. The whole thing was to beat the Russians to the moon. Well, I had, I was in Vietnam, and I was pulled out of Vietnam to do Apollo 8. NASA requested that I stay out there to do Apollo 10. Then they re requested I stay for 11 th through the Navy, and the Navy kept me out there to do uh, 11. So I did three Apollos and could have stayed doing Apollo 11, 12, 13, right on. But I told the Navy Department that after Neil Armstrong safely landed on the moon, safely arrived back at Earth, that I had photographed three Apollos, I couldn't top that. I couldn't do better than that, so I, no need me to stay. Send somebody out here and give them a chance. We flew almost daily for a month, just a dummy capsule in the water. We started in San Diego Bay, uh, flying and picking up the capsule, pretending to pick up astronauts. The, the Navy SEALs were, were pretending to be the astronauts and we'd pick them up into the helicopter. My helicopter, of course, is sitting over here. I'm photographing all the recoveries too. It, and we practiced totally about a month, uh, one or two practices a day. After we boarded the Hornet, my helicopter squadron flew from Imperial Beach 75 miles to sea, and we landed on the Hornet, eight helicopters for the recovery. We didn't practice between the coast of California to Hawaii. We loaded uh, dummy capsules, all types of equipment, hundreds of reporters and, and, and civilian photographers, and then we went out near Wake Island to uh, practice, and we practiced daily. At daylight, at, at midday, at dark, I think we had about 17 practices out there before the splashdown. But I'll tell you something that a lot of public don't know about the splashdown. We were on station where the, the capsule was supposed to, to land. We had a big storm come up at sea. So the Navy and NASA decided to move the splashdown site 200 miles, 250 miles from where it was supposed to. So they put the, the aircraft carrier in, in gear and we took off. And a lot of us wondered if we were gonna make it out there, but we did. 
uh, in time, and we were on station the morning they came down, uh, July the 24th, 1969. I was very nervous. I had gotten up at three o'clock in the morning, ate breakfast, then went to the radio rooms to, to be briefed. We briefed on nearest distance to land, what time the command models were gonna, gonna splash down, uh, where all the ships around us were located in case we crashed in the water. And uh, uh, we were kind of nervous. We got underway, lifted off the carrier before daylight had two, two helicopters circling the ship about a mile out. And the photo helicopter and the recovery helicopter hurled my earphones and my helmet that Apollo 11 had been sighted that we, we were on station. The ship was 12 miles away from us uh, at that time. Apollo splashed down I didn't see it when it splashed down because it was still dark. The, some, some of the people in other helicopters did see it. When my helicopter arrived, it was pre-dawn, pretty dark, and I'm leaning out of the helicopter and could see the command module upside down with the parachute sinking off to the left of it. I started shooting pictures and luckily I got one picture of the command module upside down and the uh, parachute was sinking. Uh, then I unbuckled, or buckled myself into the safety belt and sat down on the steps of the helicopter outside the helicopter. That's where I stayed for the whole recovery. Shot 52 rolls of 36 exposure film, eight, roll, eight or 10 rolls of color, and uh, uh, when the astronauts were picked up, put in the, in the recovery helicopter, my helicopter sped back to the ship. So I would be uh, uh, back aboard ship when the astronauts landed. But I do want to say one thing. When the hatch opened and the, and the astronauts crawled out of the command module to the lifeboat, I did have a tingling feel through my body because those men had just returned from, from the moon. I used eight Nikon cameras. Only two of them had, had motors. The rest were cock and, and go. And I, the story is I had, and this true story, I had a light meter around my neck when I opened the hatch to start with, so I could you know, see out, my light meter broke, fell in the ocean. So I had no, no light meter to, to tell me what the uh, exposure would be because, but I had practiced so many times in that morning light that I knew that every couple of minutes I had to change the f-stop. So it was, Wet my, get the wind and, uh, and, and change the f-stops and everything was perfectly exposed as you can see behind me. Well, to tell you how concerned we were, the ship never got within 12 miles of the command module. And the reason for that, we had President Nixon aboard the, aboard the ship. So we didn't want to contaminate him. And, uh, but uh, every, everyone was concerned somewhat. Well, my chest puffed up, we could say that. I was very proud to, to be that, for that part of history. The, the moment in time of men's success of getting to the moon. 
Not my part. I was just, I had the best seat in the house and I'm clicking shutters, that's all. It was the most exciting time of my life. No assignment I've had since then could top what I did back in the late 60s.